Welcome to the first episode of The Unwatchables. Uh, so here's basically the rules for it is So we have two categories. There's films that are no timers, which are basically movies that are so bad that they're not even worth viewing even one time. And there's other films that are one timers, and those movies are only good for viewing once. So a lot of films that fall into that category, either mediocre films, or they're just movies that are maybe best only upon one viewing and nothing more. So today's films that we're going to talk about are X-Men Apocalypse, which came out in 2016. And then the other film is Jurassic World 1, which came out in 2015. All right, today I'm joined by Alex and Matt. Yo, I'm hey. Alex. Oh, I'm Matt. All right, perfect. So, uh, and I'm Marcus, and yeah, we'll, we'll get started on the first one is X-Men Apocalypse, which is a no-timer we put in our category. So, Matt, why do you think the movie is a, a no-timer? Mm, it's it's really bad effects. I didn't like the story at all. Um, it didn't bring anything new to the franchise that I found interesting. And Magneto was so cool in the other movies, and he was not cool in this movie at all. I didn't like his character at all. I would say, yeah, Magneto need to be upped a little bit. Yeah. But I guess because they didn't want to focus so much on him because they wanted to do Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. But... I did, the, the probably my favorite parts were the Magneto parts, though. I will say that. But, yeah, overall, yeah. I think of too many characters, too. Like, I, I didn't understand why they had to have uh, Apocalypse bring in, well, I guess because it's his name and it's gimmicky, like the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. So he's yeah, got to bring like in. Yeah, little army. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like they didn't have to focus that much on, like, having those four henchmen. Even right now, trying to think about them, I'm like struggling. Like, the, there's the bird, the one with the wings. The angel. Yeah, the angel. Um, Olivia Munn's character, which, I mean, I'm not complaining about that. No way. <laughs> but, uh, and then the, who else? Uh, obviously, Magneto. Right, wasn't and Storm. 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 Yeah, Storm. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Storm. The movie opens up with her, right? Did yeah. Her? Or Apocalypse. This towards the beginning, Apocalypse helps save Storm. Yeah. Yeah, that's when he's like brought back. Oh, right. That's okay. I mean, I, I totally agree. I think that this movie, you could just say, just straight sucks. Like, I think if you were to, like, you know, like, you boil down, like, what what is this movie about? Like, what's the plot, right? So it's like, you have Apocalypse Awakens. You have, like, he puts together an evil team. Basically, the X-Men have to stop him, and then he wants Charles Xavier's body. Like, I almost feel like a movie that did a better version of what Apocalypse wanted to accomplish was, like, Thanos in the Infinity War. If you think about it, like, both movies in that. some ways kind of had some similarities where there's a lot of characters. Like, the main character you can even say for both films are the bad guys. Like, kind of, like, assembling stuff, right? Like, Apocalypse in that movie is a pot... Like you, like, you mentioned earlier, Alex, where he's, a like, gathering the horsemen, right? Yeah. And, like, Infinity War, he's gathering the stones, right? I guess I haven't seen uh, Infinity Wars yet, so... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's on my list, I swear. <laughs> well, Matt, what do you think? Do you think that... I think we could have done without this movie. <laughs> oh, well, this movie, like, I mean, too, like, I think there's another aspect, like, Alex, you mentioned the whole gimmicky thing. Like, this movie, it's about Apocalypse. The movie's called Apocalypse, and he wants to usher in the Apocalypse. Well, I didn't like the whole, what they did with Magneto at the end, where he's floating by the, the pyramid thing. At that point, he's with Apocalypse. Isn't he fighting on Apocalypse's side? Yeah, at yeah, that yeah. Point? That's when he's joined him after that, right? Yeah. That, I mean, I don't think that should have ever happened. I would have preferred... Magneto just versus Apocalypse with the other X-Men. I remember that part where he's got all that metal. Yeah. I remember really zoning out because... I remember it, that too. It felt way too, like, special effects-y. And it looked terrible. Yeah, I, I didn't know if it looked terrible, but it, it for me it felt like it was just too much. Like, I was thinking it could have been accomplished with just him, like, I don't know, like, just holding down, like, putting his hands on the earth or something and, like, trying to, like, shake the core of the war of the earth, you know, like, the earth's core or something. But they added in all this, like, cities being, like, torn apart, and I'm like, I don't know, that kind of lost me a bit because it just seemed, like, disaster porny-ish, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think... And, yeah, I mean, the facts might have been lacking, too, and, like, putting all that stuff yeah. up. I mean, I'm not a huge CGI fan anyways, but... Yeah. I think as a whole, the movie would have been better if it was just toned down overall a lot more. Yeah. But the, I guess the hard part is, like, Apocalypse is a character. 
that's not really what he's been about. I mean, a lot of the times he's he is destroying a lot of cities. Like he's a lot of destruction. And he's a big character. Yeah. Too. Oh yeah. And he, there's, there's like, he gets, his name's well, he freaking apoc- apocalypse yeah, so too. I mean, like... I guess it's a hard thing to juggle. But the fact that it was so big and grand scale, it almost just seemed it seemed boring to me. And I mean, how many times have we seen that kind of stuff happen in these type of movies? Yeah. The superhero. Movies, we just yeah, cities are getting leveled, lots of destruction, just over and over again. But this like this movie, like this X movie, was. Like, it was almost accumulation of, like, everything wrong with, like, big budget movies that come out, or especially superhero movies where the villain's very one-dimensional. Like, mm-hmm. you guys both mentioned, it's, like, a lot of disaster porn. <laughs> it's just, like, a lot of, like, really big stuff happening. And, like, yeah. I heard another, like, a film critic person on YouTube talk about how, you know, there's this scene where Magneto goes to Auschwitz, and, you know, like, in the movie... You know, he gets down on his knees or whatever, and he screams, like, no, and he's shouting to, you know, God in heaven, and he's really going overboard. And, like, I just feel like that doesn't really mean anything. Like, when you see it, like, the movie, it's almost like the movie's idea for its idea to be good was, like, just stuff as much into it as possible. Almost like a pot pie, like, that you would eat at home. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, we got some meat, we got some potatoes, we got some cheese. And then somebody's like, oh, throw in pickles and onions and, like, Let's yeah. throw in a cookie. And it's like, this movie had, like, everything put together. And, like, the, like, end result was, like, a crap sandwich. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, like, even, like, Apocalypse is, like, motivation. Like, what is the motivation? He had a little bit of layering. I totally agree with, like, it was too much stuff put in. It felt like if they just dialed some of the just things, um, it would have been a little more fine-tuned. But I feel like the little bit that Apocalypse did have was like that idea of uh, like almost like elitism where he's talking about like the strong need to inherit the earth where it's like uh, if you're powerful, that's who I'm trying to help out. So there's like a little bit of that in there, a little bit of like motivation for the character. But yeah, I mean, at the end, he's like just trying to make some doomsday, like a quote unquote doomsday device thing, you know. It's not, like, it's not that fine-tuned. I mean, he doesn't really play off. Like, he talks about the whole, like, the strong trying to inherit the earth thing. But he doesn't act, he doesn't do too much about that, you know? <laughs> no, he doesn't. And, like, I, I just feel like, too, that I think that with a lot of movies today, like, even, like, big-budget films, there's, like, the aspects of the film that kind of make them a little gimmicky. You could say the things that are the spectacle, the things that sell the film. Mm-hmm. But then there's the underlining tones of it, like good triumph over like over evil or guy gets girl or you know there's reconciliation between people in a broken relationship and i just feel like with this movie yeah i mean you do have that that good versus evil but that's like the full extent of this movie there's no like there's nothing deeper than that like charles xavier and magneto at this point we've seen them go back and forth break up get together like six times now yeah, that's kind like, of their dynamic, though. Yeah, but, like, but they keep doing it over and over again. Like, this film, like, what is... Like, if you were to strip it of the spectacle mm-hmm. and the fact that it's a superhero film, like, what what would you say this film is, Matt? Like, if you got rid of that stuff, what is it? I don't even know. That's how much of a mess <laughs> it is. I mean, I guess it's... it's. I guess, I mean, the movie is just... It's about those those two and... I, what what does he want to do? He wants to cleanse the earth, right? Isn't that yeah, what Yeah, that's basically yeah. cleansing the earth. And yeah. essentially... I mean, I guess they never reach anything with Xavier that, like, do they even have a point where they even talk about, like, like in terms of just, like, what are their beliefs? You know, does he ever argue against, like, belief? I mean, it's more just about good versus evil. That's what it apocalypse? ends up being. Yeah, I mean, like, Apocalypse says he wants to cleanse the Earth, and then Xavier and the X-Men are just essentially there to stop that. I will say... It doesn't go any deeper than that, at least from what I recall. It would have been good if... Because I... Like... I don't think, again, Apocalypse showed this kind of motivation. He more talked about it than showed. But if they, at the end, had one of the, like, weaker characters defeat him, I feel like that would have been a little more meaningful because you have this, like, almost godlike, and he talks about, like, he's, you know, he references himself as a god a few times. So you have, like, this ultra-powerful character who, again, like, the it wasn't displayed that well, but he did talk about, uh, how the strong should be the ones like ruling and if you're strong then you know you're on my side and then the weak need to perish but so you know if, if they played that with that would they would they play showed that idea more and then at the end have like one of the weaker mutants defeat him 
that would have been a little more meaningful because it would have shown like you know he's wrong because you know this weak character defeated him but at the end it was more like even a more super powerful mutant. Remember, uh, what's her name? Jean, Jean Grey as Phoenix. Jean, yeah. Well, basically, at the end of the, the movie, it was basically... Which is kind of Everybody badass. threw the kitchen sink at Apocalypse. It was yeah, yeah. every single X-Men except for Wolverine is there basically pounding him as, as hard as they can. <laughs> and like, What did you feel about the cameo with Wolverine? I mean, I feel like with Wolverine, you. that was the best part of the movie, I thought. That was the only part of the movie where I was like, it feels real. It feels like I'm actually watching real people die. <laughs> yeah. Like... When there's the big, you know, like when the cities are falling apart and the water's flying and the earth is crumbling, like, I don't think anything of that. Like, I have no emotional connection to that kind of stuff, like we mentioned earlier, Alex. And I feel like when Wolverine's, like, killing people, you know, it's like, oh, this feels kind of real. It feels a little dark. It feels a little gritty. Yeah. And I just feel like, yeah, but with this film is that, I mean, you can maybe say this for every film. It's, oh, you know, you strip a movie... Like, you ship a movie like Infinity War, or you ship a movie like even like Dark Knight of some of the spectacle. Like, what are you left with? And I just feel like the difference between those films and this, or even a lot of other superhero films, is that there is more stuff in those films that if you strip away the CG and the spandex and all that stuff, there is something more to those plots. Like, for example, you know, you look at like a Dark Knight compared to this. Like, if you yeah. strip away the big action scenes and the gadgets and the, you know, the Joker himself. Like, if you were to turn him into, like, a normal man, mm -hmm. you would still have a crime thriller. You yeah, would the movie's a crime movie before yeah, it's anything. It's a crime thriller that has... It, it's almost like they're pretending to dress up at the same time. Or, like... You, you don't if, need the Batman to be in it, but, of course... Yeah, he is. It's, and it's a Batman movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a Batman movie. Or, you know, like, even, you know, a movie like, you know, Civil War. You know, if you were to strip them of all their outfits in the fighting, you know, you kind of have this idea of, like, you know, the world's a little gray... You know, and that's like yeah. you could be people on both sides that are good, and it's just like a little slight difference of opinion can kind of lead to yeah, clashing. Like, like the central motivation of the main characters and like what's trying to be accomplished. Yeah, and like in that movie, like that's a major theme of that film, or you know, even like Captain America, the fact that he's standing by his side, his friend's side, so much, and like that's a major element of that where he's protecting Winter Soldier. I just like for this movie, yeah, there's just there's like nothing. Like what he strip away is this is the sixth time. Magneto's been brought back in. And here's yeah. another thing too, for continuity's sake, is that the first X Men film came out in two thousand, right? The one that had the first one directed by Brian Singer, mm -hmm. and this Apocalypse was directed by Brian Singer. Like, this film takes place like in the eighties. Yeah. So that, basically, what between like fifteen to twenty years from Apocalypse, you have that first X Men film. Yeah. So like, you get like James the, McAvoy to Patrick movie? Stewart. Yeah, no, I mean, like, in their own timeline that oh, they yeah, created. Yeah, yeah. The same director, even. This isn't like, oh, they fully reboot. Like, Brian Singer directed X-Men's 2, or well, 1, 2, Days of Future Past, and this one. So he's directed four oh, out of the six. How many years are in between First Class and Apocalypse? 20. Because, uh, what's really? the girl's name? Uh, Moria? Moria? Mariah? The... Wait, which one? The uh, oh, CIA, CIA woman? CIA yeah, CIA. Woman. Like, yeah. She looks the same. She didn't yeah. age a dog. Apparently she had a kid <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but... no, there's, yeah, there's 20 years. Maybe there's she's 20... immune. <laughs> yeah, there's 20 <laughs> years Wolverine. between the films. Yeah. Because, uh -huh. yeah, the first one, yeah, it took place, yeah, like, 19... It took place the Bay of Pigs, like, uh -huh. 61, 62. Speaking of the other X-Men movies, though, what are your guys's like, What's your favorite X-Men movie? If you've seen all, all of them. Oh. or out Personally, of the I would seen. say Days of Future Past. I agree. That one is really good. I like X Men Two the best. See, and I think another thing that's interesting about like Days of Future Past is like I think that's why this movie even sucks more. Is that <laughs> you bring back? Well, can this... I just quickly say I yeah. would put this? Maybe it's a little too late to say it, but I'm I'm leaning more put on putting this one into a, a one timers than a no timer. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't think it was that that bad. Oh. I remember because I rewatched it pretty recently. I remember. Thinking back about it, I was like, it really, I really didn't enjoy it. But then watching it again, I was like, uh, it, 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 like, I, like, it had some fun moments. Yeah, I mean, I think in my mind, a big, like, uh, indicter or whatever you want to say for this film, the reason why I think I personally dislike it so much is like, uh -huh. Days of Future Past comes out 2014. It has Brian Singer, it has Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, it has all the same cast. Same director, same studio. Like, Days of Future Past, I feel like, was very well executed. The plot made sense. 
it was, you know, even though it was time travel, it's kind of complicated. There's a lot of mm-hmm. mutants, but like they focus. Like Days of Future Past said, we're focusing on Magneto, Charles Xavier, Mystique, and Wolverine. Yeah, and those are those are the mutants we're focusing on. Everyone else is in the background. Uh, Apocalypse. And there was a lot of yeah. and there was a lot of characters in Days of Future Past, but they were just kind of in the background. Yeah, they were kind of sprinkled. Like there was the future mutants. There was the 1970s yeah. mutants. I feel like this film just basically threw everything out that made Days of Future Past good, and they're like. Oh, like people want Nightcrawler back. So here's Nightcrawler, and here's a young Phoenix, and here's a young Cyclops because I haven't seen him in a while. And like, anytime any movie goes, oh, here's the young version of yeah, this here's the you young. Like, it usually just go where yeah, it's like well. here's the young versions of them, and like here's like there's so many mutants, and you're just like, like you just want to just like why do I even care about these people? Like why do I care about Quicksilver in that film? I mean, he has an arc as you know Magneto's his yeah. father, but like. I don't like that because he was cool in first class. Exactly, yeah. and he had a he had a <laughs> cool scene funny. in Apocalypse. He was yeah. good. I, he's one of the best characters, and I guess. Well, Days of Future Past is on first class. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Days oh, of Future yeah. Past. He's one of the coolest characters, and I was excited to see him again in Apocalypse. There's in terms of like performance. There's nothing wrong with this movie. Like most of the performances are terrible, including Oscar Isaac. Who's, oh, Oscar who's Isaac. Usually a really good actor. Well, the thing with him is like, I mean, I, I, it's obviously been talking to death about how he looks like Ivan Ooze from the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie. Yeah. <laughs> but just like the blue face, like the I difference think the of character. like, yeah, like this, like his size ratio would change because oh, like Oscar, Oscar Isaac isn't that big, but there's other scenes where he's holding Mystique yeah. by her neck and she looks tiny and like, it's everything about him so over the top that you know. I, I think will take everything they issue. built and burned. Yeah. I, I don't think it's so much the acting, but character, it's like the apocalypse character is just like this big, like, I'm this god, like, I have to. I, yeah. Well, Than- like, he's a Thanos is, to me, is more apocalypse. I mean, I don't even see Infinity War, but Thanos and. Apocalypse. I hear good things about the Thanos. Yeah, I mean, though. he's. To me. Well, he's that, multi dimensional. Um, yeah, to me, he, he. That's more apocalypse than anything, and that's Marvel. Well, I feel like with Thanos, the difference compared to him in Apocalypse is I feel like with Thanos, it's like, you know, for him, he's not trying to kill everybody. He's not trying to destroy every planet. He's not just cruel and his, his motivation makes sense. I mean, that, like, if you look at Infinity War, he's, he's like the star of the film in certain Mm -hmm. regards. I mean, you really see the film from his perspective. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best uh, villains and he's probably, he's, he is the best villain we've seen in a Marvel movie yet. In the MCU, I don't. I mean, a lot of people like Loki a lot. It's another different discussion. Yeah, but at least with Thanos, it's very multi-layered. Like what he wants to do, he's not just I want to destroy everything for no reason. I think Apocalypse is an ancient evil's awaken. It wants to destroy everything for no reason, and it's just kind of like they kill him, and it's like okay, well, yeah, he's dead. I mean, like that's another thing too. Like he's called Apocalypse. One session in the Apocalypse. And, like, we know in the X-Men universe that the Sentinels have taken over in the future. Like, we know that Magneto in the first film is a big enough threat to assemble the X-Men. Like, I just feel like like Apocalypse was this big baddie that, like, he just never delivered. Like, it's just like, they never mention him in the future films. It's just like, oh, do you remember that time Apocalypse showed up in Egypt and we had to kill him? Oh, that's and somebody like... was like, yeah, yeah, that that was good times. That was one of the times Magneto was on our <laughs> yeah, side. Yeah, but they didn't know they were gonna make like an Apocalypse movie yeah, back know. then. Yeah, but why that's... not set it then in the a current time so they were like, there's more at stake. You know what I mean? Because you know there was nothing at stake. You knew he was gonna get defeated because films take place after him. Well, that's the problem when you make any movie like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, theoretically, Deadpool I, Deadpool exists in the same universe as Apocalypse, right? He exists in the X-Men universe. True. Deadpool came out three months before Apocalypse. And Deadpool takes place in current daytime, so that movie takes place in 2016, right? Mm-hmm. And Apocalypse takes place 30 years before. So mm-hmm. you know that Apocalypse doesn't succeed because another movie in that same cinematic universe came out I think that's in looking current too day. into it. I think that's looking <laughs> yeah. a little too into it. That's Yeah, that's not enough reason to say, I mean, yeah, the movie shouldn't get made. It just, I mean, that happens in movies, like, literally all the time. Anytime you do a prequel. But should this movie have gotten made? No. No. <laughs> what did it, there's another thing, too, for the overall, you know, X-Men, like, whatever you want to call it, canon or cinematic universe. Whoa. Like, what does it add? Well, yeah, we didn't get anything it, new. It does add the um, the rise of the Phoenix, uh, Jane or Jean. Yeah, Jean Grey. But Jean Grey, there was already the Phoenix was the third X-Men. Yeah, yeah, but that was, like, the whole... That was, like, the, in the future. That was, like, grown-up Gene. Again, this is, like... I guess it's trying to establish, like, the the characters we know as, like, their younger selves to, I guess, build them up again. Well, because the next X movie coming out is Dark Phoenix, which is oh. slated to come out March of 2019. Oh, my. 
But like, but this is, everything this I've heard about that movie also sucks. Like the early screen testings well, have been terrible. Yeah, but didn't Days right. of Future Days of Future Past erased X Men two and three, didn't it? It definitely erased three. Yeah, definitely erased three. I don't know if it erased. Well, two. we don't know. We well, yeah, we don't know. Because we this, don't know what it's erased. Well, the striker, the striker character at the end of Days of Future Past was some. Deke, right? On the boat? But we do know that Wolverine does get the animanium put in Yeah, him. he does get the animanium. Yeah, and right. that striker is in Apocalypse. The same actor, and he's striker. Yeah. Who in X Men 2 is played by Brian Cox. All right. Yeah. So that guy in Apocalypse, that striker, yeah. goes on to become Brian Cox 20 years later. That's. <laughs> they couldn't. Like, that's another problem too, I feel like, with this movie. It's like. Yeah. They are picking actors that look nothing like the original cast that they chose, and it's like. I mean, people can say, oh, it's a nitpick or this or that. It's the same director, same studio. Like, the guy that plays Stryker in Fruits, uh, Days of Future Past and Apocalypse is, like, a taller guy. Uh, like, that doesn't bother He's, like, a military guy. And then he shrinks to become, like, a fat British guy? Ah, uh, that By 20, 2004? I forgot he was British. Or what, is, is he British? He Welsh? I don't, know. I don't know what he is. He's definitely not American. Yeah. Uh, kind of sounds amazing. Isn't he in the Bourne movies, too? Yeah, he's yeah in, he was in the Bourne uh, movies. Uh, at least a Bourne movie. Good actor. He's in yeah no Brian Cox. He's good. Yeah. No, he's a good actor. I think he's a better striker than strike the young striker. <laughs> Next Men Origins striker that guy too. Remember him? That was that was that was the new striker. The first time we got the new striker. Right? Oh, that's true. Yeah, the, the he's Wolverine tall, movie. Is he? <laughs> yeah, that actor actually looks like that actor looks a little bit like Anthony Bourdain, <laughs> the guy from the first yeah, X Men from the Wolverine movie. Wait, wait, who looks like Anthony Bourdain? Like, uh, did you the see striker? the striker? Yeah, well, no, did you see the uh, Wolverine? X Men movie, the first one. X Men yes, Origins. It's been a while, but yeah. The guy that plays Striker in that. Yes, film. I know who you're talking about. I so, know the actor too. Yeah, I don't know his name. I don't know what else he's been in, but he's a taller dude with like grayish hair. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess. Uh, do you guys have anything else you want to say about this movie? Uh, just that Michael Fassbender is one of my few man crushes I have. He's a <laughs> handsome dude. I think one of the, I just want to point out, I, I, I had a genuine, genuine laugh out loud moment when, uh, so when Magneto's, uh, family gets killed terribly and then he's going to the, um, steel factory to like get revenge and then, um, Apocalypse and the gang like just show up like behind him. And he just turns around and then just goes, who the fuck are you? <laughs> I thought that was genuinely great. Yeah, because that, that literally, from a storytelling standpoint, comes out of nowhere. Yeah. For his yeah. standpoint. You know, it's like, his wife was His wife and daughter were killed with a yeah. bone. And that's what they too. I, I laughed, like, when I first watched the movie, when they were introduced, I saw my brother, I leaned over to my brother, and I was like, they're not making it out of this movie alive. <laughs> <laughs> I never could have predicted they would have been killed by the same arrow. Some this guy thing. with a some guy with a, a quick trigger finger with arrows. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Like, oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> the guy was literally like, because they were being attacked by the birds. He was like just looking around with the arrow yeah. drawn, and then he just lets go. Like, oops. <laughs> I know, dude. Just just terrible aspect yeah. of that. <laughs> a little misstep there. All right. So I guess we'll go over what makes this movie unwatchable and why it's a one timer. So we basically said it's the worst X Men movie ever. Poor characters. Bad I don't plot. know if it's the worst. I gotta think of all the ones. I mean, Origins is pretty bad. Origins is bad, but I almost feel like it's so bad it's good a little bit. Like, there's parts where you can Wait, laugh which out loud. Origin? Laugh. That's the Wolverine movie. For all the wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you but if you're laughing at all, then isn't that good? Uh, mm. uh, you got an argument that, That's there. up to debate. That, uh, right. yeah, that's an so argument then, for another episode. time. I also have this. This has <laughs> no replay value. And yeah. it's an example of everything wrong with big Hollywood movies today. Just this whole movie, everything is... Like, look at me. I'm Apocalypse. I'm destroying this. The water's flying. And, like, I you're would dying say... in, a, in a sea of CG. <laughs> yeah, that that was a problem. But I'd say there's a few good things. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> there's not, there's, that's why there are a few. <laughs> there's, a, there's a, well, like... I, I would Let me say... think about the good things. <laughs> there, there, was, there was parts that, like, I was just enjoying. Like, that Michael Fassbender... Uh, little joke at the end um i don't know um I, I i i found myself enjoying parts of it okay i did i mean overall of all the x-men movies too i would look, rank this pretty low but i don't know i think it deserves a little bit of credit i'm just throwing a little a little like, dash like salt bay just kind of putting a little bit of dash mm. i think it was I, there's moments i enjoyed 
Now, what do you think? And crucify it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crucify geez. it. All right. Brutal. <laughs> I could go without it. Right. So the next movie we're going to talk about is Jurassic World 1, which the majority of us says or say is a one-timer, although there is a little dissent. So let's first go into a little bit of Jurassic World 1, just for those of you that might confuse World with uh, Fallen Kingdom, the second one that came out in June of 2018. Uh, Jurassic World 1 is basically... I mean, it's weird. In 2015, there was like three movies that did the same exact thing where they basically rehashed the first entry in their franchise and they basically remade it slash rebooted it that year. We had it with Mad Max. We had it with Star Wars. We had it with Creed. We had a little bit with Terminator Genesis and Jurassic World. All of those movies came out in 2015. But anyways, Jurassic World, we go back to the park for the first time and whatever 20 years it's, 22 it's operational years now yeah it's operational now and um yeah this movie especially compared to fallen kingdom is far more understandable not as big of a crap sandwich but uh about that. <laughs> all right let's uh let's get into it so i mean i think this movie was was just your run-of-the-mill mediocre i think it was just very land very hollywood very just oh yeah you know it's a dinosaur and they kind of they kind of forgot everything else about the plot they just said here's dinosaurs here's chris pratt here's ron howard's daughter bryce howard's uh dallas howard but, you yeah. should have more self-respect because this movie was straight insulting to me <laughs> all right well alex <laughs> let's go to you first what, what are your thoughts <laughs> boy oh boy um did not like it at all i thought I just then tie like it started, <clears throat> and I just lost interest right away. The kids, the characters, I couldn't wait until they got eaten, and I knew they weren't gonna get eaten because they're That's the main true. characters. They're the main the kids. kids. Yeah, they're not gonna get torn apart. But the entire time, I'm like, please let like. <laughs> was let it both get... kids equally, or was it the younger? Kid I like the. I didn't like the older kid more. I guess. I mean, the the younger kid, he's more just like really excited and. Sp- kind of spazzy about it and then like he gets sad about his parents divorce and stuff and i'm just like okay whatever like i can tolerate this kid but the older brother like just apathetic just doesn't care about anything yeah. he has a girlfriend and like he's at the park just like staring down other chicks so like already like that's not a likable character trait a little bit douchebag yeah like classic douchebag and just like he's he's at a dinosaur park like as a as a viewer, like I was kind of excited. I'm a big Jurassic Park fan. Let's okay. get that out of the way. And you know, like as the main characters, you're supposed to like kind of view the movie through them in this in this way. And it's like I guess I I, I tolerated the little kid more because it's like he's excited to go to the park and like see all these dinosaurs. And I'm like, yeah, like I can't wait to see this movie. Like let's see what the dinosaurs are gonna be like. The other kid's just like, oh, I don't care whatever <laughs> dinosaurs. I'm like, what what do you what you, what the hell do you have going on in your life where this isn't... It's not like they've been there a million times. They established that that's their first time. It's like, do you not get... He's the only one in the crowd, too. Like, when they're doing the uh, the water dinosaur thing. Oh, the show? Yeah, like yeah. The, the Shamu show. equivalent of Jurassic World. Yeah, yeah. Don't care about it. Yeah, like, until he gets splashed, he's like, oh, that was kind of fun. But it's like, you see him in the crowd. Like, everyone's like, holy crap, there's a dinosaur in the water. And he's just, like, texting someone. It's like... Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that with this movie, what they wanted to go with was like, they wanted to quote have like the meta narrative of, like you know, the, like people today they're not impressed by dinosaurs anymore. Yeah. So we need bigger and better dinosaurs. And I think that kid, like when you mentioned the older brother, is supposed to be the common day person that's oh I can't get off my phone. I'm all about this. And yeah. I think that one thing that Hollywood doesn't get is because maybe they don't actually interact with kids, and maybe they don't love their own children or something. <laughs> But I don't think they realize how kids <laughs> actually think. Like, 15 and 16-year-old kids, like, I mean, we were that age, like, not super long ago. I mean, there was actually things in our lives that, like, mattered, right? There was things that we actually gave a crap yeah. about, right? Well, we were human. <laughs> like, you we still human, are. Right? I mean, like, we all had cell not phones like back then. like these millennials. <laughs> yeah, like, this, this kid in the film, it Ruining was... the world. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think Hollywood, when they depict kids now, so they're only addicted to their phones, and they don't care about anything, and it's like... Everyone in this movie, well, almost like almost every character, all the main characters were literally like from a dumb sitcom. 
yeah, like, yeah, you, they are very are, one-dimensional. They're, they're extremely weak. That's my biggest beef with the, with the movie, is the characters. They are very, very weak in the movie. What's and the they're, and you don't, I don't like them. I, Bryce Dallas Howard, I can't care for her when she's allowing the dinosaur to run amok Instead of evacuating the island, they're like, oh no, let's go send the team to go capture the dinosaur. Oh no, it's just going to eat the team. And evacuate right off the bat. I don't like yeah. you because you're going to sacrifice what she does. That, you know, yeah. Yeah, the, the normal group, the people. The people did the did any of you guys like any of the characters? Like, I mean, no, the, well, I like Chris Pratt's I like, character. But I like Chris but Pratt. for stupid reasons. <laughs> I like Chris because Pratt Because he's riding himself. a motorcycle with the raptors. And he's training the raptors. You know, pe- people... That's the only thing that was like cool about him, but... I mean, yeah. I, he had his stuff together more than anybody else in the movie. Yeah, he is cool. But he's still, but yeah, but there's some. Like there's there's one dimensional. Exactly. Kind of there's like. there's nothing special about it. Like I, I mean, I agree with a lot of your points. Like this is very. Not, there's nothing special about the movie. Yeah. I, I, the only reason why I call it a one timer is based off the fact that it's a return to this franchise. That's it. Well, see, in That's my the mind, only reason why I say the, give it a chance. The reason why I say this movie is a one timer compared to no timer is that even though Alex, you very, you raised some very good points about the movie, and I think that. In a vacuum, if you were going to, if you were going to get stranded on a deserted island, mm-hmm. and you can only bring a thousand movies with you, the reason why I would say this doesn't even make that list of a thousand mm-hmm. is just because it's just so generic. And I feel like the only reason why, yeah, I say that it's more than a no timer or it's worth one time viewing is either a if you're fans of the franchise, or b like you just want to watch a stupid movie that like just has like like everything in it where you're, you're just kind of thinking to yourself okay like at least the dinosaurs are getting out than a jaw just rex you're like thinking to yourself like okay like i get this like this makes sense like i understand this happening but i mean you have questions in your mind like how come there's no fail safe where they can kill the dinosaur like why isn't there a bomb injected in their necks when they're born so they can blow <laughs> them up if they get out of line but regardless of that stuff the movie in my opinion just goes totally off the rails with Vincent Denario's character, or the not, I see his last name. Den- Denar Denario Denario. Oh. Vincent. Who? Wait, what does Denofrio. he do? What He's is the he... guy that wants to have the Raptors. Oh, the military, the military guy? guy. Yeah, that is so. I mean, it's just like like when you first hear him say it, like when you when he first says like, yeah, you could take these Raptors and you could send them in Afghanistan. Yeah. Like, you think from the viewing, like, from a viewer's perspective, when he says that to Chris Pratt, you almost think, like, okay, like, maybe they're setting up a plot for the next movie. Yeah. Or maybe they're, like, just kind of, like, they're just kind of, like, just trinkling on a little bit of, like, oh, like an Easter egg. Mm-hmm. But then when it happens this movie, you're like, this is so stupid that I'm, <laughs> I'm rooting for a raptor to shred this guy to pieces. <laughs> Even though the main bad guy of this film has been eating people nonstop, like, I, I it was, know. A, it was a, yeah, it was a dumb idea. I wasn't even afraid of the Indomit, Indomitus Rex. The yeah. Donofrio. <laughs> We're still trying to pronounce his Donofrio. name. Donofrio. Yeah, Donofrio. Yeah. <laughs> the it, wait, it, it, I gotta get this. It, Adro- Adrominus. The Abdrominus Rex. Well, Adom- right? I've also heard it said Ad- Adrogynous. Adrogynous? Like Adrogynous. Yeah, it's yeah, not, it's not that. Adrominous? Adrominous Rex. Yeah. I didn't think it was... I don't know. Like, they put all these things, like... It could camouflage, which it only does that once. It can, like... Again, all these things that it does to, like, outmaneuver people. It literally just does it once. And yeah. it's like, okay. Like, this is how it got out of this situation. Almost like, you know, they just have this creature, like... How is it going to get out? Oh, it can lower its body temperature and, you know, not be detected by thermal monitoring or whatever. And then that never comes into play never again. again. Oh, it can camouflage. That one scene where it's like they're hunting it. And, you know, you think camouflage. Like, oh, that'd be cool if they set it in scenarios where it's like it's right in front of them. Or it's like it's almost like Predator, uh, the movie Predator, where it's like, you know, uh, you see it through its perspective. Like it's watching yeah, you. It's infrared. right in its face. Yeah, yeah. But, like, because it's invisible or it's camouflage, it's like, you can't see them. I was like, no, they just have that once. Which, me and my sister always laugh that literally when the when the first gets out and they f- send that first team of people... <laughs> With the non-lethal weapons? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? Yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> that, 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 like, that little that Chinese guy is gonna shock that yeah. androgynous Rex. Uh, me and my sister... Indominus, sister's bitch. I guess. Indominus. A- Indominus the Indominus Rex. Rex. Indominus. Gonna, they're gonna, Indominus. Those five guys Indominus. are gonna sh- shock yeah. it. But I love, but I always crack up at this, like, so it, it, it takes out its its tracking tri- ch- tracking chip. Oh, so that's another point, too. You raise a really good point. They have a tracking chip in it 
But there's like no bomb in there, like just yeah. to blow them up, just in case it gets out of control. Well, they put a lot of money it's, into it. Yeah, it's it's a million dollar, multi million dollar. But it beast. said, but it said the monster gets <laughs> out and then it destroys the whole island. But they don't care. That's the whole point about it. <laughs> Why would they put the bomb in it? Because they don't care if it eats people. Yeah, hmm. but then but it destroys the Those business and kills the CEO. Like chump change to yeah. the. <laughs> yeah, but the in this film the CEO even dies. Like he actually cares about the island and gets shredded. Yeah. But wait, wait, I want to say when they go to the lethal weapons and they find out the camouflage. The dude yells, it can camouflage. Like, as if we couldn't get it. Like, yeah. he had to yell, it can camouflage. And then he gets eaten. It's oh, he like, gets shredded. Yeah, he wow. gets, gets I, marked. I think another thing, too, about these films, like, where these monsters are out of control, nonstop eating people, is I think, like, you know, in real life, predators, like, they only kill to eat, like, when they're really hungry, right? Yeah. Like, lions aren't nonstop killing 45 cheetahs a day, right? Yeah. I feel like in this movie, it's just like <laughs> I'm androgynous not just rex- cheetahs like lions, Thomas. like <laughs> cheetahs are lions like me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like just with these, like you know, these other predators, like they kill the eat, like and that yeah. they stop. And the androgynous rex, like he just the won't. The dominant rex won't stop. <laughs> Like, well, he they, nonstop they, they is they killing. They talk about that though in the movie. Don't, remember, they say that she's they killing do. for sport. Yeah, whatever? she's killing yeah. for sport, but it's like. I don't believe I, that. I don't know why she's killing for sport, yeah. but they they said it, so they now said, we don't like, have to question it. Because <laughs> it's been in captivity and, and like it bored. doesn't have. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I never. I I was never like really afraid of it because it seemed too monstery. Like I I think the reason it was scary in the first few movies or in any of them like the T Rex. Yeah, it's like it's it was just dinosaur. an animal. Yeah, it was just a <laughs> dinosaur, and it kind of showed you like you know, this is this prehistoric animal and you're just so tiny to them, but it's not like this complicated thing. It's a dumb animal. It's like, like Godzilla. Yeah. Or something. It's just a big animal, like an yeah. elephant or something. Yeah, where in this one, it's like, it's it's almost like this this monster. It's not just, you know, the this force of nature. It's it's, it's a super villain. Now. Yeah, it's like this super, yeah, exactly. It's almost like it's a, a super, super villain. Yeah. It's... Where it, it's not like this abstract, like, thing about nature it's like oh, we made this thing to be scary so it is scary it's like that kind of loses its appeal then it loses its kind of uh... it's just like it it was too big for itself like the yeah. idea of it was just too it grew too much i think outside of what like jurassic park was and mm-hmm. i mean this movie it didn't have it, no magic that jurassic park had yeah you know, like that magic well, kind of feeling you get. Mm-hmm. i mean i, I remember I've, I've listened to a couple commentaries about the first jurassic park and they were saying with spielberg when he made the first one that he didn't want it to be a monster movie. He didn't want yeah. it to just be a film about how these dinosaurs are man-eaters, like you mentioned earlier with the Dominus Rex. But that they were supposed to be the sense of awe. They were supposed to be the sense of, like, oh my gosh, like, look at this thing that man has brought back to mm-hmm. life, right? Like, man playing God and he succeeded, right? And that's what the first film's about, where these dinosaurs aren't ultimate killing machines. They're just something that man shouldn't have tapped into. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, you get into this film and it's like, oh my gosh, like, Hundreds of people are getting killed by pterodactyls. The Dominus Rex won't stop killing and eating people. Like Vincent, De- uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, like like his plots over the top. Like everything in this film just screams like if we take the first like somebody like in a board meeting in 2012. There's Spielberg and there's Colin Trevorrow and there's like the execs at Universal, and they all got together and they's like, oh, let's make Jurassic Park one again. And like, let's just inject steroids into it and make yeah. everything bigger, like, exactly bigger. Like, and, but also, but then strip out, you know, the the good characters and the emotional yeah. core and all that kind of like stuff. the moral the, ethical well, the heart questions. Of the, movie. Any, any, yeah. the heart of the movie. Well, because even the first Jurassic Park, the whole idea of that film is like, okay, man can do something. Should he do that though? Mm-hmm. Like Jeff Goldblum's like, should we bring them back? And that's all part. That's all part of the plot. Is like all the main good characters are saying, let's not do this thing. Mm-hmm. And in this film, like no one's it's even thinking about s- that at all. Yeah, it's kind of the same where it's like man shouldn't create this monster, but then it's like it's so obvious, like yeah, you don't create this monster. Where the other one, it's like you're bringing back dinosaurs. Like how amazing is that? You you can get this research. It's like it's like you bring back dinosaurs. Now it's like. <laughs> should we make this monstrosity? Should it be able to hmm. camouflage? Yeah, should it be able to camouflage? It's like, of course not. So, you know, why, why did this? Because the scientist talks about that. He's like, it's a perfect killing mach- machine. I will. I'll, I'll let you know. Because <laughs> I... in the original one, the idea of... Um, uh, I'm kind of a science nerd. But the idea of like uh, cloning and stuff, because 
they get you know the DNA from the mosquitoes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I guess it's not like a full. It, it doesn't have everything. There's like yeah, gaps, like the frogs or whatever. Exactly. Right? There's to gaps in the, the gaps, DNA. Yeah. yeah, and so they put in like modern lizards and other animals to like fill in the gaps. Mm, and this right, one, right. he did mention that um, there's a scene where it's like, oh, we we added some, we filled in some cuttlefish, which is like. An octopus, oh, which and that's the yeah, and they're really good at camouflage. Yeah. yeah, but it was just like, cool. yeah, the th- they didn't explain the thermal. Well, him. and then it's part raptor, and then yeah. once we talk about Jurassic World two, sometime in the future, we'll talk about how basically the villain of that is the same thing. He's yeah. an over the top super villain dinosaur, but <laughs> I mean, like I love that term super villain yeah, dinosaur. And like I mean, other people have talked about this, so it's not like you know we're we're breaking new ground here, but it's like. Like, why does it need to be a super killing machine and why does it need a camouflage when its whole purpose is to be looked at? Yeah. I mean, like, the whole purpose of that dinosaur's existing is in an ideal world, people would, like, walk on, like, a banister or something yeah. and, like, look down and be able to see it, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't exist well, for any other the, purpose the, than I, that. I think the camouflage and stuff was a byproduct, but it had too many of those. It's, like, thermal, they didn't know that it could drop its body temperature and it, they didn't know it could camouflage. They didn't know it was going to be smart enough to pick. It's like all these things. If it was just one thing, yeah, or then it's, it's like, it, 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 again, it, 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 it's the same case with like Apocalypse. It's like less is more. You know, yeah. if you just drew back some of the stuff, it would be a little more interesting. No, this movie, yeah, you're right. Everything about this movie scream like more. Like just keep pumping it in. Like, yeah, yeah. It was everything. Too much. Yeah. But. It's still a one timer, right? I was no. so sad. <laughs> I still think it's a one time just because, like, I feel like what? if, like, if you were, like, because in my mind, I think this movie's like a four or five. So oh, I think yeah. it's out of 10. very, yeah, yeah, very down Maybe the even line. Lower. Yeah, I, I I'd think say it's, lower. I see it's very down the line where it's like you could watch and you're like, okay, like, you know, like when the secretary gets unnecessarily shredded. I wish I was one of the kids. <laughs> yeah, like you kind of chuckle at that. <laughs> or like, like the kids. Yeah, you know, I, I, the kids are bad. I, I agree. Well, and I think too, they added the kids because they're like, oh, do you remember the, how that first movie had kids? The, here, here's like, the, let's the bring in some in. kids. Here's yeah. the history of the kids. So the first one, there's some kids who it's like the... the uh, Dr. Hammond's John, grand, Dr. grandkids. Dr. Hammond's yeah. grandkids. And it's like the, the main character doesn't like kids and like he's in a relationship where it's like... The wife wants kids. So it's like they're in danger and it's like he learns to fall in love with kids. Him. Yeah, he learns to fall in love yeah, with kids and that's exactly. kind of sweet. And the that's second what the first, movie, that's what the first movie is about. That's the yeah. messaging for the movie. Yeah. And the second one, The Lost World, you have Jeff Goldblum's Jeff, daughter. Yeah. She comes that in. That black girl. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and he's dating a white woman in the movie. I guess they adopted. <laughs> it's like, okay, I guess. Sure. And, um,. She comes in, she sneaks in, and it's like, there's danger, we gotta keep her safe. Okay, and it's like, the parents right there. And the third one, it's like, the kid gets lost in it. On that island. And then the parents go and find her. And this one, the kids come on, the parents just send them there. Yeah. The aunt just, like, doesn't even care she's about terrible. them. Yeah, she's just like, okay, whatever, she loses them. There's a scene where, when she first, the aunt first finds out, like, tries to look for the kids. Um... So, because they escape that rolling ball thing, and then she goes and finds them. Yeah, she doesn't. She gets in the jeep chasing for them, doesn't she? At one yeah, point? yeah, yeah. Oh. And then she's like, oh. "One redeeming moment." Yeah, and they put like a joke like right after where it's like she's like, "Oh, can you?" Because to Chris Pratt's character, she's like, "They're like," uh, she says, uh, "Can't you track them down? Can't you like get their scent and like." listen to footprints and he's like i i was in the navy not the i was trained by the navy not the you know cherokee or whatever yeah, something like that <laughs> yeah and i'm just like like do you care like why are you wrecking this joke like your, your kid like your nephews like could be like being torn apart by yeah. dinosaurs i hope but <laughs> a lot of terrible people in this movie yeah. i think that's the too this movie yeah like the characters are very like one-dimensional there's not a lot of like redeeming aspects of their character like like, Vincent D'Onofrio is just bad because he's bad. The CEO is stupid because he's stupid. <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard is... She's a corporate woman, and she's a corporate woman the whole movie. Going out with a yeah, Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt kind of guy. Yeah, Chris like... Pratt is a Chris Pratt type of rogue. <laughs> yeah. Where he's teaching dinosaurs, but he's living off the grid, but he has a normal job, too. Like, he's... Like, there's, there's not the a lot of depth. romance was so, like... 
Well, it was care. so obvious it was going to happen. And, like, you know, yeah. here she is. She's the chick with the stick up her butt. And mm-hmm. he's the kind of guy that, like, doesn't use coasters. And, like, yeah. you're right about that earlier when you said it's like a sitcom. I mean, that would be the sitcom. Yeah, exactly. Is that, yeah. If you stripped the dinosaurs away and it was shot like a sitcom, that's how it would go. So he'd go to her house and the whole house would be very organized. Mm-hmm. And he'd put his feet up on her table and put, like, a beer on her coffee table and or there comes the laugh track yeah. oh. <laughs> and she'd come out and she's like what are you doing yeah. where's the coaster get your dirty feet off the table I felt like there should have been like they could have put in a laugh track they put jokes that like were meant to be with a laugh could track could you imagine there. we go to the movies and they start putting laugh tracks when is that gonna happen <laughs> that'd be oh, crazy I want, uh, if they do a big bang uh, theory movie they'll probably do that yeah. oh. oh my god would they do that probably would that'd be hilarious all right, so laugh track. Oh, we should add it in there. <laughs> yeah, we should. All right, well, I guess yes. Yeah, so we've we talked about this one, so Matt and I we think it's a one timer. Alex is more of the opinion it's a no timer. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching the first episode of the Unwatchables. Uh, we plan on making future episodes in the in the not too distant future. Uh, definitely one movie we want to talk about is Jurassic World two. So Fallen keep Kingdom. It, Fallen Kingdom. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye.